Hi, everyone. This is Toshio Okada's Late Night Talk. This is the fourth video of the Mobile Suit Gundam Talk series. In the fourth video, I'm going to talk about the first episode of Mobile Suit Gundam, Gundam Rising. The episode title was originally Mobile Suits. The key point here is, among other things, how the animation was directed, in this episode. The interesting point in the first episode of Gundam is, in the first episode, the relationships between characters are quite complicated, but director Tomino made such storyboards that only two people appear in each cut, so that children could understand the story. I mean, for example, in the first scene, several Zeon soldiers come down in the mobile suits. In the conversations between them, only two people talk at a time. And after the camera enters side 7, Amuro and Fraubo communicates one on one. After Fraubo go outside, only Fraubo and Hayato talk. Amuro is not shown at all. After that, too, Captain Paolo and Tem Ray, Amuro's father, talk one to one. In this way, most conversations are in one on one settings, in an attempt to simplify a fairly complex story. Another point is, in this video, I was explaining episode 1 in a viewpoint of what if. We see Mobile Suit Gundam as a story. When we look at the entire flow of the story, at first, Major Shah of the Zion himself did not intend at all to attack missiles there and take military action against Side 7. He really planned to do only reconnaissance. For he had run out of supplies. It was enough for Shah to do only a reconnaissance and report it to his boss, Vice Admiral Dozil. Since his mission was to see if it is possible for the Xeon to do that. But, there, war began suddenly. In the seminar, I talked a little about what if in the history, I mean, what if that incident did not happen. It should have been this way, but things went different because of the incident. We see a big turning point of the history in the first episode. I talked about such a viewpoint in the seminar. Now, I will deliver the fourth video of Toshio Okada's Gundam talk. Let's start. So, the first episode. The original title is Mobile Suits. In the pictures shown during the narration at the beginning, many robots in the same green shape appear in a scene where the enemy is attacking. They are mobile suits called Zaku. We know that now, but when I watched the scene for the first time, I felt strange to see the same robots appearing one after another, because in the robot animation programs at that time, it was common that a new robot appeared in each episode. However, these robots called Zaku only have something like a machine gun. Having something like a machine gun means having no super weapon. They have only one eye, but we soon find that this mono-eye does not emit laser beam. You think what are they going to do in this animation? Then suddenly, the Avon title finishes, and the title of the first episode, Gundam Rises, is displayed. Then, the story begins with the first scene, which depicts a situation like this. Only breath sounds are heard in space. Three green mobile suits emerged and crept into the space colony. I pay attention to a scene in which the Zaku robots opened the hatch after they landed on the space colony before entering. One of the Zaku robots grabs a dial-like handle and turns the wrist to open the hatch. I think this is not correct, due to probably a lack of understanding by the drawing staff. What Yoshiyuki Tamiyo wanted to make was the scene in which the space bot opened the hatch in 2001 A Space Odyssey. In A Space Odyssey, a handle of exactly the same design as in Gundam appears. Just as the space pad grabs it, its wrist rotates like a drill. Then the sliding door opens slowly. On the storyboards of Gundam, Tomino drew a sliding door and a rotating switch of the same design as in A Space Odyssey. But the drawing staff must have only thought, oh, I see. It just turns. That's what I imagine. In Gundam, when the switch is turned just like you turn the microwave oven's knob to turn on for 15 seconds, and then the door opens electrically. First of all, the colony shouldn't have been equipped with a device like an electrically operated, easy open door. Because, there are no mobile suits in this space colony. So, this device must be an emergency door for forcibly opening the hatch for a machine tool from the outside. 
and probably in tool would grab the handle with a rotating arm, and the arm rotates to open the door. I think that's what Tomino wanted to show, exactly the same scene as in a space odyssey. Perhaps there was not sufficient time length. Whatever the reason, in Gundam, the knob is turned like you turn the microwave oven knob for 15 seconds, and the door opens automatically. When you go back home, please check this scene. Considering the allocated time length, that scene obviously intends to depict that the wrist of Zaku robot rotates in a non-human manner, and the door opens. So, when I watch this scene, I correct it in my mind to a scene that the Zaku's wrist rotates. I'm afraid that they won't do such a thing in Gundam The Origin, either. I just hope, please someone understand Mr. Tomino's intention. All three mobile suits are painted green. This is also unusual. At that time, the enemy's robots were in vivid colors, like in Mazinger Z, which was the most popular robot animation at that time. These are so-called warning colors. Wild animals in nature give warning colors to warn that don't get close, or you'll get hurt. You know, like deep sea fish. Mostly, ferocious fish are in vivid colors. There was another reason that vivid colors are easy for children to paint. So, basically robots were in extraordinary colors at that time. The friendly robots are painted in only a few number of colors, such as red, white, yellow, or blue, like, tricolor colors. The enemy's robots are, on the other hand, in various colors, with extraordinary combinations, like green and purple. In Gundam, the Zaku robots, the enemy's mobile suits, are green. Three robots appear, all painted in a single color, and soon we know that these robots are mass production type. There was not such a concept as mass produced robots at that time. It was invented in Gundam. And gradually, you come to understand what they want to do in this animation program. I was a university student when I watched Gundam for the first time, and was really shocked when I realized that they are not gonna show different enemy robots every week. Not just the three robots on this screen, but the same robots are there behind them. That's because these robots are supported by the country and the military. The color of the mobile suits expresses these things.